Hey everyone, welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to break down here on episode 248, the Web of Venom, Venom, uh, Venom in Vietnam, one-shot storyline. I really don't like this title for this book, Venom. Um, I get it, it's tongue-in-cheeky and whatever, and it's kind of a reference to the Nam comic book that Marvel used to make, uh, but it's, I still don't like the title, but it is part of the Web of Venom one-shots that Donnie Cates is doing with various artists to kind of help expand what he plans to do with the Venom character in the symbiote lore over the course of his run. And in this one, what we were kind of told was that we were going to get a Rex Strickland story. And Rex was a character that was introduced in issue one of Venom and then carried on into issue two and then came back in issue five. And we are kind of left wondering kind of what his backstory is and, and how the symbiote ties into him and how they kind of tie into the Grendel and everything. So they do tell you some of that, but I will say it's not a Rex story. Not really. I mean, it kind of is. He's the narrator of it. Uh, but what we find out is there's different characters that kind of lead the book. So I will say this is spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, please turn away now. Go read the book for yourself. Come back here when you're done. And if you want to win a copy, the first person to put that code in right there, Boom, that is the digital code for this book. The first person put in, because it only works once. You put that code in, go to that website, and enter the code, and you will get a free digital copy. And then you yourself can read it, and then come back and watch the video after you're done. So we're gonna talk about this real quick uh, in this episode, and I'm, I'm gonna be as brief as I can, because really there's not, it's not a very dense story. It's a good one shot. Overall, I will say I had fun reading it. It had some surprise in it, including the two main characters. You remember when they announced this, I was kinda hoping that uh, Nick Fury would be in the book, and Nick Fury is in the book, but there's also another Marvel character that's in here. So again, spoilers, if you don't want to know, turn away. Uh, but if you're still hanging out here, the main book, or the story, the main story in it follows Nick Fury and Wolverine during Vietnam. And uh, what we have here is that we have Nick Fury explaining that S.H.I.E.L.D. found the Grendel dragon. And what they did was they extracted some of the symbiote, you know, you know skin from it, I guess, and, uh, and then injected it into mice and tested on it, and then eventually worked their way up to human testing, and they created the Sim Soldier program, which is kind of like the earlier stages of what uh, Flash became, Flash Thompson Venom became, when he was like a, you know, like a Captain America, you know, Project Rebirth 2.0. This was like something kind of in the middle, uh, and it was uh, following what happened to Captain America. It was, you know, America making super soldiers, and that's what they did. They were like, hey, if we bond humans to this, they will be super, you know, energized, have super strength and everything, and then they'll go off and they can help us fight in Vietnam, do these really nasty missions that we got to do over there. And uh, when they get sent over and they don't come back and they don't, you know, contact or anything like that, Nick Fury is now, he has four super soldiers off the reservation. He's like, all right, I need to go bring them in. So I am outsourcing this and I am getting a Canadian soldier, Wolverine, and he's like, all right, let's go over there, and you, you and me together, and, uh, and we're going to go handle this and there's even a kind of a funny tongue-in-cheeky line where uh where wolverine says like hey you're gonna put me on a team that sounds like a dumb idea and then nick fury goes yeah who would be stupid enough to put you on a team logan he's like no it's just gonna be me and you we're gonna go together um so i was like all right that's kind of funny uh so overall like i said i had fun with this i was surprised that wolverine showed up and it was kind of neat because this reminded me a lot of like like this story and with taking out the wreck stuff almost uh, it, even though there's not a lot of Rex stuff in it, you could have easily fit this story in the Daniel Way Venom run, which also had Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. working, you know, trying to track down the symbiote, the new clone symbiote that was made. Um, so it, this kind of felt like it was part of that. It kind of brought me back to that era of Venom comics. Um, and I liked that. I appreciated that. I was like, hey, this is kind of neat. So, you know, Donny Cates, good on you for making me, you know, remember that run that I actually kind of liked, although I think it kind of got bad towards the end. Those first two trades, I, I, and then the patterns three-part story I kind of liked a lot so uh, so this was neat so it was nice to kind of feel like I was revisiting that era of Venom storytelling uh, and comics but uh, but otherwise I have to wonder about Donny Cates because this is now the third book I think because in the first one he had Thanos wins that was the first thing I read of his and uh, and I was like hey this is really great it's a future Thanos and past Thanos so, and they both had the same goal. So he kind of was really good about focusing on those two and what their goals were. But then when he did uh, Damnation, the Doctor Strange Damnation, Doctor Strange felt like he kind of took a back seat uh, throughout halfway through the book and he became like a ghost rider that was being controlled by Mephisto. And then he really didn't have a big part to play. And I was like, well, I thought this was a Doctor Strange event. And he was the one that caused this whole thing. And he kind of goes away for, you know, middle of the book and then comes back towards the end. Uh, and so I was like, you know, now he's doing that with Venom. With Venom, 
It started off with Eddie Brock making decisions in the first issue to do things like, all right, I'm going to suppress the, the symbiote and then I'm going to go out and fight crime. And he made these decisions that ultimately were some of the wrong decisions because it caused, you know, this, you know, the symbiote freaking out and everything. Uh, but at least he made decisions that affected the story. And then he kind of took a back seat and it just became exposition the book. And it was, you know, Rex telling him all this exposition and then Null telling him all this exposition. And then in the fifth issue, it was the suit telling him all this exposition and telling him he had new powers that weren't really new. We've seen wings in the comic before. Uh, speaking of which, um, I found my <laughs> Nova number seven. So uh, in this issue, Venom had wings. Also in Venom versus Rune, the, the one shot, uh, Venom had wings in that issue too, big bat wings as well. Uh, and then also like when Rune bonded with the symbiote, it had wings again there. So anyway, I'm just saying like, it, it was like, I'm kind of curious about Donny Cates because I'm starting to pull away big time from his writing because although this was a really fun issue, uh, I thought we were gonna get a Rex story. And even though Rex is kind of like in it and he has a part in it, he doesn't affect the story too much. He's just kind of there and you don't really get to know who he was as a person. And that's weird to me because in the symbiote said in issue five, Rex was a really good man and I really liked him and admired him. And because of him is why I want to act like a human and impersonated him. And I wanted to do human things. But in this story, like the suit kind of, you know, becomes Rex and gets, and, and then runs in Nick Fury. And Nick Fury's like, yeah, I left all, all those men went to die, but hey, that's part of war. But I'm going to hire you now, Rex, uh, to, you know, help me hunt the missing alien symbiote, which is Rex. Obviously, Rex is the symbiote. At the end of the story, Rex dies in this. Spoiler alert. Uh, Rex dies, and the suit becomes Rex. Uh, but you don't really get a sense of who Rex was. He does one selfless thing in it. He runs off to uh, get away, and then he decides to go back and fight. And you're like, okay, that's one act of goodness. He went back to save uh, Wolverine, and then it turns out he didn't really need to because Wolverine ended up... Uh, well, he, he did and he didn't uh, because Wolverine ended up not uh, really, you know, being that he was he was under the possession of a symbiote but he was going to go kill nick fury and it turns out it wasn't even nick fury it was a life model decoy so rex is like whoa there's a robot here and a, a mutant like he's learning all this for the first time uh, and then also wolverine is learning for the first time that aliens from other planets exist because at this point he's like really fury you're going to bring an alien you found an alien from another world and you're going to send it to war that's kind of dumb it's the first thing you're going to do with an alien and then fury's all quiet he goes wait We've, we've met aliens before. He's like, that happened? Uh, so, you know, you could kind of see the, uh, the, the the stuff that S.H.I.E.L.D. keeps to themselves and keeps out of the public knowledge. Uh, so I liked elements of this. I thought it was fun, but really at the end of the day, this didn't feel like a Rex story to me. He's barely in it, even though you find out later he's narrating the book, but it's not really Rex. It's the suit narrating as Rex. And uh, you see him get his job at S.H.I.E.L.D. Like S.H.I.E.L.D.'s like, all right, we couldn't find your suit and we couldn't separate your friends uh, from their suit. So we're going to put them in cryogenesis, uh, cryogenesis st uh, stasis and, uh, and we're going to keep an eye on them for years. And then I'm going to hire you to help me hunt down your suit wherever it is in the world. And, uh, and that's kind of where the book ends. And you're kind of like, Okay, well, that wraps up a few little things of the tiny bow of like, all right, that's the four symbiotes that Eddie Brock runs into in issue one of Venom uh, underneath the shield, you know, uh, transportation unit that's transporting them. Uh, and then they become part of the Grendel again. And you see in this one, the reason they went off the reservation was because the dragon, you know, they felt the pain of the dragon as it was being poked and prodded by shield and it drove them crazy. So they, you know, lost contact with shield and went off on their own and started killing a bunch of innocent people and American soldiers and other people. And so it was like a bloodbath over there when Nick Fury and Wolverine showed up. So for me, like, I know I'm sounding like I'm all over the place, but I just, that's what this is. This is me just dumping my brain out because this is less of a review, obviously, more like a, just like a discussion, but a rant in a way too, because I found this book overall fun, but at the same time, I, there it's like really not focused. Like it, it just shows me that Donny Cates, like I wonder if he even likes writing his main characters. So like when he wrote Doctor Strange in Damnation, he you know, Doctor Strange became a backseat character. Uh, Eddie Brock kind of became a backseat character. The story seems more focused on the symbiote. And then in this one, it's like, oh, here's a Rex storyline. Uh, we're going to learn what kind of guy Rex was, but we really don't. We get a Wolverine and Nick Fury story. So I'm just like... I'm just confused by his uh, his approach to writing things and uh, and kind of like the things that get put in the solicits. Uh, obviously, they wanted to hide the fact that Wolverine was in this. I totally get that. So it was a nice surprise, and I liked I liked seeing him in it overall because, like I said, it reminded me of some Venom comics that I did like. But when it's tying into the Donny Kate stuff, it didn't really work for me on that level. Uh, it was like, all right, I wanted 
I, this was your chance to sell me on the Rex character, and you didn't. And so I'm guessing that Donny Cates will probably tell more Rex stories later on, and we'll probably get the memories of Rex now that the suit is bonded with Eddie and his symbiote, now that they've all merged at the end of issue five. So we'll probably get moments of Rex's, uh, you know, history um, and his memories uh, since the, the suit transfers memories, you know, uh, through blood and stuff. And, you know, when they bond, uh, they share memories with its host. So I'm guessing we'll get more Rex stuff later in that regard. But for this, I was like, man, I really wasn't liking the Rex character. And then I thought we were going to get, you know, this story to so I could be like, all right, I'm sold on him now. But this didn't sell me on Rex at all. This You really don't get a sense of who Rex is in this. And you don't even know why the one symbiote says, you know, he you know, Wolverine grabs him and then... Uh, you know, Nick Fury is the life model decoy, and Wolverine says, you know what, you're a coward, Nick. You couldn't even come here and clean up your own mess. And Nick Fury's like, yeah, but this is part of war, and I'm, you know, I'm too important, basically. I'm Nick Fury. So he sets off the life model decoy to detonate, and it gives him like a 60-second countdown. But Wolverine's like, look, don't even bother running Rex, because it's just him and Rex left, and the four symbiotes are like, or five symbiotes are coming around them. And he's like, look, don't even run. We're just going to die tired. Just sit here. We'll lure the things in, and we'll all blow up together. It's the least, you know, the least we can do is protect humanity from these things so Wolverine's willing to go out uh you know selflessly uh but then uh what happens is the suits attack and one of the suits you know gra the good suit I guess grabs Wolverine and says we're not animals and like throws Wolverine to safety and I'm like okay why Wolverine and not Rex if you love Rex so much and you thought he was a good human being why didn't you throw Rex to, to safety Wolverine would have survived you already saw him uh, survive getting hit with a blowtorch and stuff he healed um, and then after the bomb goes off or the life model decoy goes off it actually doesn't kill the other symbiotes they're alive enough to be frozen in cryogenics uh, cryogenic stasis so what's the point of that <laughs> so there's like all these little sloppy things in this storyline um, in, in lieu of you know you know, wanting to write a Nick Fury and Wolverine story. And it's like, all right, I get that, Donny Cates, but, you know, maybe this should have been called something else or you should have solicited it as something else because this we didn't get what was promised in this. Um, although I did like what we got so, on some level. Uh, overall, I just see these little sloppy you know, portions of his writing. And, uh, and I, and I mean, that's just me being ultra critical, obviously. And it's just my opinion. You guys may, you know, see it differently or read the story differently uh, or have a different point of view on it. But for me, like I look at structure, I look at pacing, I look at things like that, um, because I've written, because I'm, I've edited stuff. And, uh, and this is just like, man, I would love to be in a room with these guys and help structure stuff, uh, big time. And I feel like this almost maybe just needed more page count just so you can squeeze in a little bit more Rex so you can like him a little bit more uh, but maybe you know that's just obviously that's just my opinion maybe you guys have a different one so if you do let me know that in the comments below and if there's anything I miss in this issue that you like you want to talk about let me know in the comments below and we'll continue the conversation down there thanks for watching my channel as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace